Hello, welcome to Premium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 4 of .NET Basics. In this session, we'll understand what GAC is, how and when to install an assembly into GAC. Now, GAC stands for Global Assembly Cache and it contains all the strong named assemblies. The advantage of installing an assembly into the GAC is that, you know, that specific assembly can be shared with multiple applications without having to have a copy of that assembly in each of the projects where you want to use it. Let me explain this with an example. Now let's say I have this console application. All it does is prints out this message onto the console. And to this solution, I want to add another project. Okay, let's say I want to add a class library project. So Visual C Sharp class library. And let's call this class library project and click OK. So this should add this class library project within the solution. And let's say within this project, I have a sample class which has got a static method that returns a string. So public static string and then get name maybe which returns a simple string. So return a string like this. Alright, so a very simple assembly class library project now obviously when we build this project as you might expect we have an assembly generated and I want to use that assembly within this project now if you look at the console application within this console application we are using the console class that is present in the system assembly so where is the system assembly coming from from the references folder if you look at the reference here you know this project has a reference to the system assembly now where is the system assembly coming from? Now keep in mind this is a .NET Framework assembly and when we install .NET Framework on this machine this assembly got installed into the CAC. Okay, we will see where it is present in a bit. Okay, so basically if you want to use an assembly external to this project then you have to add a reference to that assembly and to do that you right click on the references folder add reference and basically there are two ways to add a reference to this project this class library project okay we'll talk about that in a great detail in a later session but for now understand that if I have to add a reference to this class library project then I go into the browse tab and we know that this project is present in introduction to C sharp folder within the C drive so we go to introduction to C sharp folder within the C drive and we have the class library project get into the bin debug and then select the assembly and the moment we do that that gets added to the references so class library project and now what has actually happened when we added this reference let's look at that so when I open this project within uh, Windows Explorer okay so this is the console applications project now obviously this is introduction to C sharp when we compile that project we get an assembly for this project so when I get into the bin folder okay so I have introduction to C sharp assembly that's fine okay let's rebuild this once again okay so I have introduction to C sharp that's fine but if you look at this this project bin folder introduction to C sharps project bin folder has also got this class library copy of the assembly so how did we get this so that's what happened when you actually added a reference to this class library okay so so obviously if I have to use this assembly let's say in 10 different projects and when you add a reference what's gonna happen a copy of that assembly is made into all of the 10 projects where you want to use that okay but whereas if you install that assembly into the GAC you don't have to do that okay so the reason why this assembly get copied into the bin folder of this console application is because if you look at the properties of that assembly so there is a property called copy local which is set to true which means copy that assembly locally into the bin folder of this console application okay but if you set that to false then it doesn't get you know copied into the local directory but then there are other implications which we'll talk about in a later session but on the other hand 
If you look at the system assembly, when I right click on that and get to the properties, this copy local property is set to false. Which means, you know, for all the assemblies that are present in the GAC, you know, when you add a reference to those assemblies, by default the copy local will be false, which means a copy of that assembly will not be made into the bin folder of that particular application. So what's the advantage of installing an assembly into the GAC? You can potentially share that assembly with multiple applications without having to have a copy of that assembly in each of the projects where you want to use that. But again, can we install an assembly into the GAC every time? No. Okay. Now, if there is really a need to install an assembly into the GAC, and if you think that it's going to be potentially shared by multiple applications, then go ahead and install that into the GAC. But otherwise, you shouldn't be doing that. Okay. So it's recommended to install an assembly into the GAC only when required and shared by applications. Otherwise, they should be kept private. Now, there is another specific reason why you shouldn't be installing an assembly into the GAC. Now, you shouldn't add an assembly into the GAC if you wish to deploy your application to another machine using XCopy deployment. Now, what do we mean by XCopy deployment? XCopy deployment is basically simply copying an application from one machine to another machine or one location to another machine location you just copy the contents of that folder that application folder so when you do that only the contents i mean the assemblies and other files that are present within that applications folder gets copied over to the new location or to the new machine but the contents that are present in the gac they don't get copied over so obviously the dependent assemblies doesn't get copied over to the target machine because of which your application will not get properly executed when you do an X copy deployment and when you have strong named assemblies in the GAC. Okay? That's why if you intend to do an X copy deployment for your application, then the assembly should not be, you know, installed into the GAC. They should be kept private and they should be present in the application folder that is containing the EXE. Okay. All right. So let's now talk about the GAC itself. Now it's, uh, it's uh, it turns out that until the introduction of .NET 4.0 we only had one version of the GAC and the location for the GAC until the introduction of .NET 4.0 is C colon backslash Windows directory backslash assembly. Now, this path may be slightly different from machine to machine. On some of the machines, you might have named the Windows installation directory as WinNT. In that, in that case, the path for the GAC is C, WinNT, and assembly. And if you look at this, this is what the GAC is. You have the assembly name, version number, culture, and public key token. Okay. Now, with the introduction of .NET 4.0, we have another GAC, okay? So if you look at the slides here, okay, with the introduction of dot .NET 4.0, we have two GACs, and one for .NET 2.0 to 3.5, okay? For all the versions from .NET 2.0 to 3.5, all these versions of the assemblies get installed into this version of the GAC, C backslash Windows backslash assembly. But if it's a .NET 4.0 assembly, then that gets installed into this location. So if somebody asks in an interview, uh, you know, what are what is the path for GAC? There are basically two paths: one for .NET versions 2.0 to 3.5, and another one for .NET 4.0. All right. So now to install an assembly into the GAC, you use a tool called GAC Utility, Global Assembly Cache Utility Tool. Okay, basically there are two ways. One of the ways is simply to drag and drop, you know, from one folder to another folder. Just drag and drop the assembly, it gets copied over. Or you can use this GAC utility tool, gacutil.exe. So we'll see how to install an assembly into the GAC using this GAC, GAC utility tool. Okay, so now if you look at this project, we have this class library project, and you have already seen it has generated an assembly for us. So let's go ahead and see that and try to install that assembly into the GAC. And keep in mind, this is Visual Studio 2010. So if you are building an application using Visual Studio 2010, by default, we are targeting .NET Framework 4.0. So this assembly is making use of .NET Framework 4.0. So it gets installed to this new GAC, which is C Windows Microsoft .NET Backslash Assembly. OK. 
Okay, so now let's try to install this assembly into the GAC. Okay, and to do that, GAC utility is a command line tool. So obviously, we need to get to the Visual Studio command prompt. So all programs, Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, Visual Studio Tools, Visual Studio command prompt, right click, run as administrator. So this should bring up Visual Studio command prompt. Now you know that the path where we have our assembly is this path. So get copy that path and change the directory to that path by typing CD and then the path of the directory. And then we want to use CAC utility here. So CAC utility cacutil.exe. Again, .exe is optional here. And I want to install an assembly. So hyphen i, so we, we specify our intention using this i switch. I want to install an assembly. And then the name of the assembly itself. So the name of the assembly that I want to install is class library.dll. So paste that. Now when I press enter, I get an error, but we'll solve that in a bit. So what is the error message that you're getting? Failure adding assembly to the cache attempt to install an assembly without a strong name. So obviously, if you want to install an assembly into the GAC, the assembly has to be strongly named. Okay, But if you look at this assembly, it's not strongly named. And if you remember in the previous session, we have discussed you know, how to sign an assembly you know, using a private and public key pair and then convert that into a strong named assembly. If you haven't watched that video, I strongly encourage you to do so. Okay, so if you remember, we have generated a key pair uh, using sn.exe tool in the previous session. So this is the key file which contains our private and public key pair. Again, if you're not sure about this, please watch our previous video. So copy the name of the key file, and we know that if we want to sign the class library assembly um, with this private public key pair, we use the assemblyinfo.cs file and within that we use the assembly key file attribute. So assembly key file attribute and to the constructor of this attribute we pass in the name of the key file that contains our keys. Okay. And since backslash has a meaning, we need to escape that with another backslash. OK. So now if I rebuild our solution, what's going to happen? This class library assembly gets signed with this private public key pair. So now this assembly is a strongly named assembly, and we can install that into the GAC without any issues. Let's see how to do that again. So the same command, gacutility.exe hyphen i class library dot dll. So now assembly got added successfully to the cache. Now, so to check if it is successfully added, which version of the GAC should we be checking? We should be checking the second one because we are using Visual Studio 2010 and Visual Studio 2010 makes, makes use of .NET Framework 0, uh, Framework 4.0 by default. Okay, so let's get to that path. So it's present in C colon backslash windows backslash Microsoft.net backslash assembly. So within this path, you have another folder called GAC MSIL, Microsoft Intermediate Language. And if I open that, you should see this class library folder here. And within this folder, you will have your version number. Basically, we are targeting .NET version 4.0. So that's what you can see. Underscore the version of the assembly. If you look at the version of our class library assembly, it's 1.0.0.0. So that is that version here. And then another underscore and then the public key token. Okay, So this folder uniquely identifies our class library.dll. And since this is .NET Framework 4.0, we got that assembly installed into this new GAC for .NET 4.0 assemblies. Okay, Now, to uninstall the assembly from the GAC, you use you know the exactly the same tool but you use a different switch hyphen i for installation hyphen u for uninstallation so i can use the same command except that i need to use hyphen u and then if i press enter the assembly doesn't get installed i'll explain why in a bit so it says 
Okay, it didn't give us any error. It is just saying number of assemblies uninstalled is equal to zero. That's because when you are uninstalling an assembly, you cannot provide this extension .dll. So you have to get rid of that. So .dll, and when I press enter, you see that one of the assemblies is basically uninstalled here. Okay, so if you look at this assembly, it got uninstalled. So you don't see this that folder, class library folder here anymore. Now, as I told you by default, if we have Visual Studio 2010, we are targeting .NET Framework 4.0. Okay, but it's possible you can change the targeted .NET Framework. And the way we do that is right click on the project and get into the properties. And now here you can change the .NET target framework. Now I want to target, let's say for example, .NET 3.5. I select that, you get a warning, just say S. Yes. As a result of switching you know, from 4.0 to 3.5, some of the references might get invalid, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and build our project now. So when I build our project, now what, what have we done now? We have switched the target framework from 4.0 to 3.5. So obviously now, if I try to install this assembly into the GAC, it gets installed into our another, you know, into the version uh, which for which, I mean for .NET basically 2.0 and 3.5 assemblies, so which is C Windows assembly. So it gets installed into this location. Let's see that. So GAC util hyphen I class library dot dll when i press enter so assembly successfully added to the cache so we get to that version of the assembly so it's present in c colon backslash windows backslash assembly so you should see the class library assembly here so the name of the assembly the version number is this one and this is the public key token okay now let's do another thing let me add let me change the version of this assembly to 2.0 so by default the version is 1.0 I'm changing the version to 2.0 and then rebuild the solution and then I'm trying to install this assembly once again and let's see what's gonna happen so now this assembly got successfully added to the cache once again and if we get into the windows uh, I mean into the GAC once again you should see there two versions of class library one is version 1.0 and the other one is 2.0 okay so now assemblies with the same name but has got different version can live side by side in the same folder and this is called side by side execution within dotnet assemblies with the same name with the same public key token but different versions can live together and execute together all right so and this feature is called as i told you side by side execution and this is one of the common interview question what do you mean by side by side execution within dotnet or they can also ask you, can two different assemblies with the same name live in the same folder? Of course. All right. So now, if I go ahead and uninstall, try to uninstall the assemblies, look at that. When I say hyphen U, and when I press enter now, what's going to happen? So you're saying, okay, uninstall an assembly with name class library. And if you look at that, I've got two assemblies with that name. So when I try to execute this command, what's going to happen? both the assemblies gets uninstalled okay let's see that so when I press enter so it's trying to uninstall both of the assemblies so if you look at the message here number of assemblies uninstalled two. okay let me say I don't want both of the assemblies to be uninstalled I want just one of the assemblies maybe version 1.0 to be uninstalled is that possible absolutely but you have to specify the fully qualified name okay so to uninstall an assembly to uninstall a specific assembly using GAC utility what you do I mean it's exactly the same command except that you specify the version number and public key token as well okay so in this case version 1.0 assembly alone will be uninstalled okay but keep in mind when you're using you know the fully full name of the assembly make sure you don't have a space between comma and the letter V and similarly between this comma and this letter P if you have space it gives you uh, an error message all right on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET and C sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day